Today, Context is celebrating its 800th show, bringing a Christian perspective to news for the past 24 seasons. In 2001, I first reported for this show, which was called Listen Up back then, as an intern covering the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. The documentary was called God at Ground Zero, and it essentially launched my journalism career, a prime example of how Context has been finding God's stories in the news. Well, founder of the show, Lorna Duick, joins me now. Congratulations, Lorna, 800 shows. Your vision is still living on. Oh, thank you for doing such a beautiful job with it, Maggie. It's wonderful to see you soar with it. Take us back to why you felt the need to start Listen Up. Well, the show began really on training wheels at 100 Huntley Street with the founder of Crossroads Christian Communications, Reverend David Maines. And he at that time was a daily live show and he expected his co-host to have something interesting to say about news and current events. And uh, I just had so much to say about it. David started to say, okay, let's put this in a segment, let's do it here, and then eventually it became a segment within 100 Huntley Street. And after five years of being on training wheels, yes. it was launched into its own, its own program. Something brand new for 100 Huntley Street, once a week, it's called Listen Up, and here's Lorna Duick. And why is it important, Lorna, for Christians to be able to speak into news, current affairs, what's happening in the world? I love the image in Proverbs 2, verse um, 1, where it says, pardon me, 2, 2 verse 11, where it says, wisdom cries out in the street, and God is personifying wisdom and saying, I'm crying out in the street, I'm at the top of the gate, I'm asking to show you the way. Yeah. And so I always felt that going journalistically after stories was an opportunity to go journalistically after God's wisdom, and you hear it, you know, whether it was at James Bay Cree Nation stabbing crisis earlier this year, you, you heard in the sound bites of the analysis and of the families and the community that spoke, you can hear where God's heartbeat is for people. And that's the beauty of being a Christian journalist, is going in and saying, I'm gonna look and listen for God's wisdom and put it together. And I, that was always a priority. It's hard to believe it's come to 800 shows. Yeah. Listening is so important in our job. Out of all of the different stories that you've told over the years, which ones stand out to you the most? The stories of human resilience. Mm. Like absolute uh, amazing to see how strong the spirit is. I, I remember covering uh, the huge fire in Barrier, BC, a, an area twice the size of uh, Toronto burnt down 2003, and a little eight-year-old boy, Lane Barcy, saying to me, I prayed for God that my house wouldn't burn down, mm. but it did. And then asking Lane, what do you think about God now? And he would, and he, and he just said, I think God's gonna help me get stronger. Yeah. And like from an eight-year-old child, all the way to an elderly person again and again as you covered uh, places where the human spirit had to interact with something terrible it's resilience yeah. is amazing resilience yeah people yeah when challenged can really rise to the occasion you know the tagline of context is going beyond the headlines and this show has gone beyond the television screen as well S uh, sponsoring a Syrian family. Tell me about this. Uh, yeah, well, I think one of the biggest stories of the last 20 years um, has been how the refugee crisis mobilized upon the globe. Yeah. 20 years ago, we didn't have 100 million people looking for a home. Mm -hmm. And so when uh, the Syrian refugee crisis began 2011, just kids spraying graffiti, protesting a government, and a government crackdown erupted in a civil war that displaced Syrian families. By 2015, we found ourselves covering that multiple times because you see, Canada has something which we should all really cherish and hold, and that is the private refugee sponsorship clause. And so we knew viewers could care. And just by talking about that, we were able to introduce a Syrian family for sponsorship. And viewers stepped up to say, we'll pay for that. And um, a another viewer uh, connected us to two churches. And so we watched uh, um, the Saloom family, Raul and Nadal, 
you know, beautifully settled. They, they're Canadian citizens now. They've uh, been able to get their kids, of course, into school, get jobs, oh. learn English, all those things. But it needs to keep happening again and again. And that's one of the most beautiful things about about great media is you can inspire people to change their actions. And that's what I love about Context Crossroads is this two-way television that David Maines used to always talk about, right? The fact that you could turn to you know, our audience at home and say, hey, partner with us in sponsoring this family and giving this family hope, that's not something you can do on any television show. I don't know anywhere else it can be because of the two-way, which yeah is, and I, I've had people from major networks say the same thing, you did it the smart way in asking for donations. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you do that so well, Maggie, in relationship mm -hmm. with our audience, but because our viewers are saying, we want this covered, we want to pay for this, uh, and it's a, it's a two-way street, so it's lovely. Let's talk about Christianity, faith, and culture. You had Roma Downey and her husband, Mark Burnett, on the <laughs> show, uh, have become great friends of yours as well. Why was it so important to really be able to hone in on that? I mean, they have been revolutionary and leaders in bringing faith content to the main, mainstream uh, media. And this is what's so exciting about that whole um, episode uh, that, that rolled with the Bible. So here yeah. you had the kingmaker in in mainstream media, yeah. four major uh, hit shows, The Apprentice, Survivor, you know, The Voice, and God speaks at the peak of their career mm -hmm. to Mark and Roma as a couple, the Holy Spirit starts to move. First on Roma, then on Mark, I want you to make the Bible, mm -hmm. the Bible. They do 10 hours, five different episodes, even the big networks turn it down. And um, that miniseries was picked up, of course, by History Channel. And when it aired in Canada, Maggie, yeah. it beat Hockey Night in Canada wow. for the ratings. There, as Mark said, and here he is, the king of Big Buck TV, mm -hmm. he, he said, this is the most underserved market in all mm. of media, and that is the hunger for truth about God. Wow. And, and they proved it with the Bible. Let's talk about some of the crisis that you were also able to cover. Think about Haiti, um, Katrina, you know, I'm turning to my notes, High River, the High River floods as well. I've been in those spots mm. as well, and it's hard. It's hard reporting at ground zero in different areas as people are reeling and, and processing trauma and all of those things. Yeah. What was that like as a journalist to be in the middle of that? Um, first of all, knowing that God is sending you in yeah. really helps. Like Katrina, Maggie, 1,800 people died. And it was unbelievable that within two days I could be on the ground at a parking lot in front of Kmart, McDonald's, all these places, and they were pulling people, dead people, off the roof of Kmart. And what was so astounding was here's McDonald's, the largest you know, food distributor for whatever they do there, closed mm. and a giant tent is set up and the churches of the area are serving thousands of people food for free. And the contrast of seeing the resiliency of God's people say, we will care. Uh, that's one of the most amazing things of being on the ground in crisis. And you're right, I have been privileged over those 20 years to cover so many amazing stories, whether it was seeing 150 people on their roofs in High River, Alberta, when their 2013 flood happened and they're getting plucked off of there. The church completely flooded, like pews, everything covered. And yet, uh, resiliency that, that God equips people with mm. and says, get out there. Sometimes I think we think too hard when we think a crisis is coming. What I loved seeing as a journalist was people who just rolled up their sleeves and said, with the grace of God, I can do this. We're gonna get through this. And people need people. People need people in every crisis. Yeah. I want to talk about the changes uh, of Christianity within the media as well. In, in your sense, Lorna, how have you seen maybe that change in the way that Christianity, faith, is perceived in the media? Today? Well, if my goal was to make Christianity famous, yeah. I feel I was a resounding failure in my 25 year career on that on this show because I saw such a declining and a closing of the door. We had the privilege of doing a, a column at the Globe and Mail for 16 years with the content 
of context stories. So you'd cover it here, you'd write about it there. Amazing. I can't tell you how much that pitch world has changed of trying to um, get those ideas. The Christianity, faith is too nuanced for the speed that that media has stepped up to. Mm. The speed, the, the dumbing down, um, there's so many facts flying at us. And, and what media has gained is immediacy. Like we know everything that's going on everywhere all the time. What we don't necessarily know is the why. And that's the beautiful part that a connection with God can bring to our lives. You have a better analysis underway. So I think it's gonna come back, Maggie. Like I love seeing what I just saw come out of Barna that, that uh, the young people are going back to church and we boomers, my gen, we're, we're dropping off. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think connection to God is gonna come back, but boy, we have gone through uh, the greatest market share loss of faith in my, in my lifetime, yeah. in my working years. It, it, it's just, um, I, I think it's gonna come back. Lauren, how much do we have to be blamed for that? And I don't mean, well, maybe you and I, but I mean the church in general, Christians in general. Ha have we done a good job of, of painting the church in a good light? I, I don't know how to answer that, Maggie. I, I think everywhere I've looked, I've seen beautiful, beautiful followers of mm. Jesus. Uh, people are people. Uh, you know, organizations, like the media changed so quickly and so fast. I, I'm not sure um, the church had the capacity to also say, and we will stay on the front line of every media relationship. Um, it, it, it just, the world of communications exploded. And so I think as the church, you know, figures this out, and that church is one person at a time, mm -hmm. I, I think, I think people will reach back for their connection to their loving, loving God. Last question, why do you think context is still ne needed on, on the airwaves? Because the mission of God is to reach out for people. And here is one journalistic island, you know, sitting in a beautiful, caring charity called Crossroads Christian Communications. And it has the ability to join with God's wisdom and listen in the street mm. to look for God's wisdom in the street so I hope I hope you have a great new season ahead and all the best and thank you for doing such a beautiful job with oh, it Maggie I know it takes you, a Laura. team but it's, it does take a team thank you and thank you for casting that vision so many years ago and we're living in it thank you it's been an absolute delight and honor